when Arsenal knocks on the door of players, it's a different knock than other clubs, 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 clubs. Welcome back to your favorite time of the week. It's TDK Live. Rohan, I got another impression for you. Go on, then. Ready? The last one was shocking. What did you call him before we started recording? Louis Patuti. <laughs> what did you call him? Louis, Louis Patui. Louis Patui. Right. Louis Patui. Do you know who Louis Threw is now? Honestly, I didn't even bother checking. That's my impression. Ready? Go on. Who am I? Who am I? Oh, tactics. Oh. Oh, tactics. Oh, half spaces. <laughs> oh, cooperative superiority. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Who's that impression? Oh, I wonder who it is. Who is it? Who is <laughs> me, it? Me, me. Oh! <laughs> 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 Welcome back to CDK Live. How are you, Rohan? I missed you. Uh, is, it only, is it only been a week? Feels longer. It does. It does feel longer. Mm. Well, I missed you as well. I missed you. And actually, Don't I lie. did watch. The, I did watch that. Um, that SDS. Um, oh yeah. Thoughts. I watched it. Honest thoughts, mate. Y- you were really good. Honestly, <laughs> like, you were really good. Some of the stuff I was seeing there, honestly, I was getting triggered. This is why I don't even watch much YouTube fan content because it triggers the life out of me. I, lo- I loved going on that show. What were you? Yeah. Um, it was generally very fun. And shout out to Sharky who invited me on, who's a very nice guy, as were all of them actually. Um, but football opinion wise, what did you disagree with, Rohan? Not gonna lie, I think most of it was pretty was pretty good. Um, there were some questionable takes though. I, I think Go on. we'll probably talk. We'll probably talk about it. The... Stop, stop skirting around the topic. <laughs> G man's mate on SDS and now Rohan's podcast. Do you know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> oh! I had a whole intro planned. What? I was going to do a whole welcome to the what was I going to call you, Joe Rohan experience. Joe Rohan, <laughs> nice. elite podcast that is, by the way. Not as good as Rohan's podcast. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> uh, I think the Rodri disrespect was a bit unfair. Uh, I think it was all called for. You know, it's too soon. I think there's a strong conversation to be had on Rodri. Uh, so those of you who missed this, this is a yeah. combined eleven Premier League era for the title race teams. So City and you might be Liverpool ruining are. it. You could ruin it. People might still want to watch. It's been out for twenty four hours. You can go watch it. Spoiler alert: uh, Rodri wasn't in it. <laughs> um, I yeah, I, I ended up with who did I end up with? Because we, we had we had to agree. I ended up. We'll we'll do ours at the end. I think we should do ours at the end. Um, I ended up with Gerard de Bruyne Vieira. I think. But th- this is the thing, and we will come to this at the end. My thing with sit with combined elevens is they should work. They have to yeah, work I, as I a system so as well. yeah. because otherwise, what you end up doing is you could just pick the eleven most talented players. Exactly. Pick, just exactly. pick Hazard. Exactly. It's like, like yeah, think... he's most talented. Does that mean he was had the best Prem legacy? Not necessarily. So, like I saw, I saw a midfield of Vieira, Gerald, and De Bruyne. Where's the balance to that? <laughs> like, where's the balance? Where is the new balance? Where you're restricting. Balance you're restricting an absolute elite. Yeah, 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 even before this, he was in a proper mood. I, could, I, I was up till 5 a.m. Basically, my editor. Oh, oh, that was what I was going to say. This has been a nightmare start to the show. Chaos as always. Um, I've just put a new video out. So stop watching this. Go watch that and come back. <laughs> um, <laughs> is that the first time anyone's ever said, stop watching my video? Stop watching it. Turn this rubbish off and get Turn some this it. rubbish off. Get it off. Uh, I've just put up another video. Um, who is Rohan's mate? Oh, I haven't changed my name, have I? Changed my name. G Vans, mate. Um, before we get to football, Rohan, how are you? Oh, I'm doing wonderful. 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 Bank, ho- nice. bank holiday weekend as well. Oh, of course. Of course. Yes. I I I am so in the world of freelance that I'm just like it just it just Rice interrupts opposition play less than Alex interrupts. No, that's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you're comparing, I interrupt Rohan more than any. <laughs> what do you reckon the stats are on me interrupting you? 
what in terms of like the field tilt of uh, conversation? Yeah, I reckon. <laughs> I reckon thirty percent of set of your sentences I interrupt. I reckon. Nice. But that's all. That's all dynamic. That is, do you know what I mean? That's the dynamics. That's what yeah. friends do, isn't it? Yeah. And you like it, don't you? I love it. Yeah, you like it. I love um, it. <laughs> see, what, see what I did there. Very good. Right, we should turn our attentions. Thank you so much for everyone for being here. Um, thank you so much for everyone in the chat. Dub W Show says Barry Young. Thank you very much. Genuinely love you too. Thank you. Oh, Terry FC. Thank you so much, mate. Um, we love you. Mate. Alex has thirteen eleven per stream. I'm absolutely lost. I'm absolutely lost. Apologies. I have no idea. <laughs> um, we should talk about City, shouldn't we? Let's. I want to start with this. Because yeah. people are already doing the whole master versus apprentice gimmick. And I am not having it. I'll let you take this. All right, right. Go right. on. The title, and I'm doing that thing where you see a title and you get angry before you've actually watched the video, but I, I appreciate this. Sky put out a video earlier with uh, the fan debate, and it, the title was Arsenal Must Beat City. That was the, that was the title of the, of the video. Okay, Rohan? Can I just show you something? And I, I don't know if anyone else has noticed this because, you know, I, I don't I'm know what you're going to show. <laughs> Wednesday or anything or sort of, you know, anyone. But I just do want to be clear because I'm just I'm just on the football section of BBC Sport here, just on tables. And I'm I'm seeing I'm seeing Arsenal. Huh. I'm seeing Arsenal at the top of the table. Just there. So. So when they say Arsenal must beat City, that's interesting, isn't it? Because it seems to me the other way round, Rohan. It seems to me that Man City have to beat Arsenal. Why do we allow these guys to do this? Why? Why? I don't like it. I don't like it. It's the whole master versus apprentice. Arteta's got to prove it. Look, look we need to get over the line. Absolutely. We need to, we need no doubt. And we will be there. We will be there. But the narrative is coming out again. Oh, Arteta needs to prove himself. You know, the, the Arsenal need to go there and, you know, if they want to go and win the title, they need to go and see. I, I want a result. I I'm clear. But as a starting place on this whole narrative, this little bro gimmick has to end at some point. It has to. Like, we're at the top of the table. We have all the better underlying uh, underlying numbers. We've sc scored more goals and, and conceded less by every metric this season. I'm not talking about Pep's Premier League legacy. I'm not talking, obviously he's the better manager. I'm not saying he isn't, but I'm saying right now, today, this Sunday, who needs to win? It's Man City. We can draw and we stay top of the league. So, so, yeah. so why, why are we? Um, I, I completely. I, I think what it is is. It me so much. I'm going to fix my light again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think what it is. The reality is that we will continue to be looked upon this fashion until we get over the line. And I know it's frustrating because when you look at the performances of each team and who's operating with the most consistency both on and off the ball, it's Arsenal. Arsenal top every single metric out there, every meaningful metric. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, right also I do the show from here. Bit, bit of DIY. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's cheered you up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> welcome to TDK Live, guys. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry, carry on, carry on, carry but yeah, I, I, I think ultimately this is this is going to continue to happen until Arsenal get over the line because they will always look at the narrative of the business end of the season. They'll look at what City have done under Pep Guardiola in previous seasons. And I, and I, I completely understand that viewpoint. And they saw what happened with Arsenal last season. They don't take into consideration the mitigating circumstances behind, obviously, the injuries to Tomiyasu and Saliba. And he who shall not be named played um, Give me your... big part. Mm. No. <laughs> reminds, who, who it, who rhymes with, it rhymes with Bolding. Claire Bolding. Claire, Claire Bolding, Bolding didn't play for Claire Arsenal. Bolding. Claire Bolding was at the Emirates. <laughs> I saw back. Oh right, Claire Bolding. I can't remember playing. I can't remember playing centre back. Bizarre. Who do you mean, right? I'm really lost. Enough of that. We're not mentioning the name. <laughs> but but, the, but it, that unfortunately, until we actually get over the line, this is what's going to happen. Job Colding. Job Colding. 
<laughs> I do agree. I do agree. And and yeah, I, I accept... it is frustrating. It's, it is. Look, it, yeah, my my it is. point is not. My point is not who's. I still think City will win the league. Like I, I still think City will win the league. City are, in my opinion, the best club team of all time. That is genuinely my opinion. If you look at. And certainly, like I, I've said this so many times, but it's it, it does get boring when people try and bring up the Sir Alex stuff because it's it, by every single metric, trophies won in different countries, trophies won in one country, certain amount of time, um, by uh, the influence on play, like lit, any metric you want to pick, you want to judge a manager by. Pep is at the top. Pep is at the top, and then we're facing up against the 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 best club team ever to exist and the narrative from the mainstream media is oh yeah arsenal need to beat them to prove anything the best the, club team the best club team of all time are over yeah. there they just won the treble yeah right oh you want to are you oh you want to beat right yeah it's not that they're really good and you're doing really well to to be near them it's that you need to prove yourselves i get it i 100% get it arsenal do need to get over the line i'm not saying we don't my point is the framing of it is always Arsenal need to, oh yeah, oh it's it's really Arsenal's titles. We've got five years before these play. Oh, half these players are even peaking. Exactly, Why is yeah. this the now? Is it Jamie Carragher asked Clive this question? Like, oh, is it is it all over if you lose at City? Is that it then? Is it boom or bust? Is, all, is Arteta gone. is Arteta done? It's like shut up. And this is why, and this is why I said on that podcast when we were with James, Jamie Carragher's melt because what he does is when you actually try and give a valid point. He'll talk over you in a passive aggressive type of manner. Yeah, imagine someone talking over you. So annoying. <laughs> but but, <laughs> but he's honestly oh, I swear to God, he he triggered me so much. But yeah, he's a melt. And I, I hate this narrative that Arsenal, you know, this is it for Arsenal if they don't win the league this season. We're the second youngest squad in the league behind yeah. Burnley. It's <laughs> like it's mad. It's like my my dream would be, yeah, Arsenal have a massive opportunity this Sunday. Yeah. But it's not the end of the world. No, it's, it's not, not the end of the world. Like, now, I'll tell you what, though. There is some... I'll tell you what. If Mikel Arteta wins the Premier League, there are some uncomfortable conversations to be had. And I'll well, be there. He, is in, he is then in most people's all-time top 10 Premier League managers. By, by everyone's logic. Yeah. Because they would all have people like Carlo Ancelotti try and make a top 10 list and not have about three or four managers who've won one Premier League. And then you're not having the manager who won the Premier League in the era of Pep and Klopp. That is mental. So and the youngest ever manager to win the Premier League. And the youngest League. ever manager to win the Premier oh, Apart from the, the Papa Jose? I think Arteta was younger. Or no, would, would, would be younger. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go, Rohan. Um, let's come to the actual game then. Yeah. My light is really annoying me. Is it not it's annoying? Right. Is it, can really... you see it? It's like it's like yeah. flickering. No, it's not flickering. I swear, is it my screen? Oh, whatever. Um yeah, okay. So overall, kind of f- leaving that to, to the side in the media or whatever, focusing on the actual game. Yeah. How confident are you feeling going into this? Because I, I feel confident. And I think I just yeah. said it in a video, which, by the way, you should not be watching this. You should be watching the other one. Let's just be absolutely clear. Um, <laughs> so there's 200 of you here. What are you doing? <laughs> um, the Yeah, the, the, like I, I said this on SDS. I was like, look, if Arsenal can't feel confident going to the Etihad this, this weekend, Top of the league on the best run of form I think we've been on under Arteta, about to break our potentially break our, our goal scoring record for the season. Um, you look at the numbers. I mean, did you see that second balls number thing? Yeah, it's crazy. It's honestly like, crazy. Look at some of these numbers. We've beaten them twice already this season. What what else do we need to be confident? Like people who are oh, Arsenal, yeah, you're getting smashed. What what more could Arsenal have done so far this season to to say? You should, you could be confident. You should be confident going to this game. Well, like, like genuinely, give me an answer. I don't have one. It, this is the first time. I'm angry we... today, Rohan. Why am I so angry? You're not angry. I think you need to calm down now. Yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> right, let me have some there. water. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I think you know when you look at over the 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 past few seasons when we've gone to the Etihad, this is the first time which we're going into that game with a lineup that is close to as strong as it could be. I don't buy the. Gabriel and Saka potentially missing the game. I think both of them will be fine. I think Martinelli is hit and miss. Um, uh, that, that, that's one that is definitely, there's doubt there. But you look at the form that Arsenal are in. This is an incredible graphic because actually... Look at this. But, but what makes it even more impressive is that we attempt fewer, there are fewer second ball situations in the game 
for us and our probability and our success rate is higher. That's mad. That's honestly, and it's higher by a significant margin. We're it's like, honestly, we're over twenty percent higher than yeah the next best, I think. And we've Almost competed, all. and we've competed in fewer situations as well, which makes it even more impressive as well. And um, that's why I look at Arsenal. And um, there was actually, I don't know if you saw it, but there was a clip with De Zerbi where he speaks about how he doesn't like um, second ball scenarios. He doesn't like going direct. He believes that football should be played on the ground from the yeah. back because it allows players to build confidence, courage, and it allows them to be ready during really tough environments when they're against a really se severe press. And he, yeah. he feels that it's very important that they, they maintain that. But I'd argue that, you know, you can increase the probability of you gaining success by going a little bit more direct, which from De Zerbi's point of view, if the ball is on the ground and you have the ball, you're in complete control, regardless of what other teams do, because you have the ball. When you go direct, the ball is in the air. Therefore, you don't have the ball. So it's more probability. But you can increase the probability by what you recruit. And you look at Havertz, you look at Rice um, and Jorginho being a really good second ball winner. Arsenal are, have showed there how they are so good at going over the top and being able to win that second ball and effectively bypassing that entire press and mm. you're into the final third. Um, but I, I think in terms of this game, I'm really confident and I'm even more confident with John Stones potentially being out because I think that is so, so big to them, especially when we'll probably talk about it, the tactics in terms of what we did in the community shield and now John Stones was a massive part in our plans. Have you got your um, tactics board? Oh, I've got it. I haven't got the names on though because uh, I got absolutely you spell. destroyed. Well, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> he's an engineer but he can't spell <laughs> yeah I, I, yeah stones and, and walker is massive we'll come to that later yeah i think um yeah i i, I yeah yeah uh cesar says what makes city fans confident just etty had vibes thank you so much for your contribution mate um i mean city have every right to be confident yeah I, I uh, every right to be confident that they're, they're the trouble winners there we're coming there you know we got smashed for one last season i think a lot of people don't just look at the results and go, oh, well, they got smashed last season. I think City had a way of playing that really, you know, it's Pep. He worked out that we weren't going to be able to deal with those long balls without Saliba. And I think it was part of the reason, you know, we we made the sign we did in the summer with Rice. Um, I think Alex Ford has said it in the chat. Yeah, the second balls with Rice, one for England, maybe so angry, it was completely in vain. We have completely different ways of playing now. So however they come at us, which we'll talk about in the tactics section later, yeah. um, I, I feel confident I, with, but I, yeah, I think City have every right to be confident. My point is, we should be confident. You know, it, it, yeah. this is a this is a game, in my opinion, that will be that will be extremely tactical, probably quite boring for people who are yeah. absolute yeah. nerds like me and you. There'll be Gary Neville <laughs> trying to create some narrative out of nothing. It'll be it'll be like, oh, Rice, oh, I think he's limping or something. It'll be something like that. Um, just to try and create something for Scott. Yeah. I'm so angry today. <laughs> no, but on, no, it, honestly, I'm yeah. telling you now, they both melts, and oh, I'm so tempted to actually mute the commentary. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> but, yeah but, I, I think I think City have, like you said, every right to be confident. They, the reality is that a large portion of City fans will look at the narrative. They'll look at the fact that City, the business end of the season, they are immense they 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 don't give yeah. you a sniff and when you no. have an opportunity to take points off them you've got to take it because they're not going to drop many points elsewhere but city fans also then they've not watched arsenal every single week so they don't know how good arsenal are and that's why we should be confident going into this game the form that we're on we're on an eight game winning streak if we beat city that'll be the the biggest winning streak i think we've had since like early venga years um that's that's how well. good it yeah i think that's how good it is um well. So I think both teams, um, I think City will be very confident because of the fact that they do have those different makers in Haaland and De Bruyne where you talk about this game will be very boring. I agree as well. I think it's going to be very similar to the Community Shield game, very similar to the game at the Emirates early in the season. So then what, what, what decides the game? It's those fine margins. And City arguably have better chances of capitalising on those fine margins in comparison to Arsenal. So both teams can be... but. City could easily win as well. Arsenal could easily win. It's one of those ones where it's so difficult to, uh, so difficult to um, to decide on. I think if Arsenal get through the first twenty to twenty five minutes of the game, we're so in this. Like yeah. we're so in it. Yeah, I, I, it's. I don't just want to say, oh, it's, it's just all going to be about mentality. It's really, it's, if any, if there's any game that isn't about mentality, uh, as much as other Premier League games, it is this one. However. I will say that I think that, yeah, if we get through that first sort of 20, 25 minutes and manage to maintain you know, a decent level, they don't get near our defences, maybe a little bit cagey, I think we will 
growing a bit of confidence. I think we'll start to see players go, do you know what? I'm going to take you on. I said this again in the video, you know, we look at the the 1v1 matchups, maybe we'll come on to this, and I'd love to know who you think is going to be the most important 1v1 matchups. You look at those 1v1 matchups and you start to go, actually, we're not far. I would, you know, if we're doing a combined 11 of City and Arsenal right now, there's probably five Arsenal, six City or something, or five, six City, you know, six Arsenal, five City, you know, it's something like that. We're not going there as we did last season going, no. And I, I remember last season, I remember thinking, this is going to be a game that we we can get through. Do you know what I mean? It's a game we can yeah. get through. We might nick. Whereas now I'm I'm looking at uh, our team and I'm going, we absolutely, I'm not saying we're going to go there and teach them a football lesson, but we are going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. And we have been going toe-to-toe -to -toe, toe -to with them ideas-wise since 2022. But we now have the skills and the and the experience and, and the actual skills-wise, uh, the actual players to back it up. Um, I'd love to hear about your most interested 1v1 matchup. I'd also like to hear about your player that you would pick as maybe Arsenal's main man. I've spoken about David Raya in the video that again, 300 of you are here watching this and you should be watching another one. Crazy. Um, so I will do, I'll do another one. I think Rice is going to be, is going to be, key. it's, it's a master. bit of an obvious pick, but I just <clears throat> I think dealing with Rodri, all the stuff we spoke about last week, um, the second balls, um, the the idea of a player that can grow into a scenario and grow into a game as we were just talking about, but also, I think with the way City play, and we'll come on to this on the tactics-wise, they have so much rotation in the midfield. Just And it's not just the fullback coming inside. It'll be Kovacic will drop deep and Bernardo steps in. And then if they're playing Rico Lewis, he can go in and out. And there's so many... The way they access the midfield and pull out is so interesting and, unique, and it changes game to game to game. And who do I trust to be able to match every single one of those for phys physically? Who do I trust to match them in terms of their runs? Who do I trust to be be clocking those things and going, okay, he's in there, right stand there, all that sort of stuff. That that confusion that they create by dropping in a Kovacic or a De Bruyne or whatever, whatever they're trying to do, because they're so different from game to game. I trust that Rice will be able to understand and, and take on the instruction from Mikel, right? When Kovacic does this, do this. When yeah. Rodri does that, do this. Because we saw it. We've seen it happen already. We saw it in the Community Shield. And I think, you know, it's an easy, easy um, choice to make. But I do think Declan Rice and Rodri decides what happens in this game. You're talking about the best midfielder out of possession in the world versus the best midfielder in possession in the world in terms of <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um and and we we we'll, we'll obviously talk about it, but the community shield game, honestly, there's there was just so many different triggers and ideas that both managers were 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 looking to field. And then just countering each other and it just cancelled it it cancelled itself out. Cancelled itself out. Um, <laughs> cancelled itself out. Get back now. <laughs> I love it. Can I just say, it's so cute how much you panic when I leave. <laughs> I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. Carry on. But, uh, <laughs> but I, I think um, that that's obviously the key matchup. And I think when we talk about our predicted 11s, assuming Martinelli's fit, right? Let's just say he's fit and he's ready to play. There's two positions in the squad, I think, where there's actual debate on who you go for. The rest of the lineup speaks for itself, and we'll probably talk about it later, but um, yeah, I, I think that rice Rodri battle, it's just so key. And I also think, with Jorginho most likely to start, I think City, and we'll probably talk about on the tactics board, I think they'll try and provoke Arsenal to do something, bait them to exploit Jorginho. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. I, the, there's so many, I mean, how they used Rico Lewis last time, so high um in the community shield obviously we're talking about the use of the use of rodri i've seen them use yeah the, 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 there's so many it's different things that they so could good. do so maybe let's go to the tactics board to sort of speak about that more specifically let's okay. just do a couple of questions before we do do that as you <laughs> do do as you get something up uh Rai could make it four wins in a row against wow. man city pet boss arteta cold war vibes alex how fast can you down a pint <laughs> Uh, no, mate. Actually, how 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 fast can I? Die? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, let's go to uh. I actually, I think I'd get the the gas, and I don't think I'll be able to do it. Anyway, let's move on. Here we go. No, yeah. come on. What? You've got to put the names, some na or at least the numbers. I remember my my L's and O's don't don't work. <laughs> Maybe if you get it up, then. <laughs> Go on. 
spit some ball knowledge. Right, right, okay, okay. So, so we, I'll, I'll briefly go through it again. This is the community shield and what we did out of possession. And just imagine this is Havertz, Rice, Erdegaard, and we'll have to imagine. Us. We'll have to imagine. And what we did when Rodri was in the midfield line alongside Kovacic, Havertz would curve his run with the intention of forcing City to play towards their left. So then Erdegaard jumps, and because. Kovacic and Rodri are close by. Rod Rice would then sit on Kovacic and then Havertz would drop on Rodri. And then Edison would then get the ball back again from um, Diaz and we'd reset again. And so that was what we were doing a lot. And with Rice on Rodri, the intention was to not allow him to turn and face play. So we're happy for him to play that entry pass into Rodri and then for him to play it to Stones and then Havertz would then jump back on Stones. But City can't escape. That's the key. When Rodri dropped into the back line, Arsenal sat off. Rice started to sit and we, we we then started to move into our mid-block, the 4-4-2 mid-block that you can kind of see there. With the intention of when City accessed the middle third of the pitch, we then again try and force them towards the left, jump on a Kanji who was the pressing trigger out wide, and then we would again try and um, utilise our high press um, in this same manner. What, all, what they also did at times in order to provoke Arsenal to press man-to-man -man, is that Kovacic would drop a little bit higher so then you can see City are actually operating more the dual eights. And actually, let me go back to this really quickly. The key here is that Arsenal have given City a numerical advantage in their first phase. They've got more numbers, yeah. but Arsenal have more numbers um, across the last line to prevent Haaland and um, I think it was Alvarez from generating an advantage in that fashion. So what City tried to do, actually, is they pushed Kovacic a little bit higher. Bear in mind, this was Thomas Party on the day. There's two centre-backs, the full-backs pinned by their wingers. Mm -hmm. um, Erdogan, remember, he's screening Kovacic before he jumps on Diaz. But because Kovacic has moved higher, if Diaz receives the ball, the distance is too far. So Erdogan's position would be higher, and that provoked Arsenal to press man to man and party with then jump onto um, Kovacic. And then you can see here, it's man to man across the back line, it's man to man across all areas. So they provoked Arsenal to press man to man in those scenarios, which we did well because we had Thomas Partey. Now, with Jorginho, I think what they'll do, Alex, is they'll try and provoke Arsenal to press man-to-man -man because they know that Jorginho is not strong 1v1. So mm -hmm. if you see here in the same scenario, that'll be Jorginho, that'll be Kovacic, and then Arsenal again, man-to-man, -man, that'll be De Bruyne and Haaland against Lieber and Gabriel. And what I think Arteta will do, and we'll look back on this, is that instead of Rice staying onto Rodri, Rice will sit off and it'll be Erdegaard and Havertz pressing in a pendulum-like fashion where... so. Again, same principle. That's Erdegaard, that's Rodri. You've got the two number eights, the Bruyne there in the right half space. Same principle. Havertz trying to curve his run. Mm. He forced City to play to the left. And then Erdegaard, who's initially jumping, who's initially on Rodri, he then jump onto the left centre back. Then Havertz drops onto Rodri. And it's that pendulum like fashion where Havertz goes onto the centre back, the right centre back, then Erdegaard drops there. So, but then what you have here is again, you've given City that advantage numerically in their first phase, but you're not allowing them to escape whilst having that advantage across your last line yeah. where Jorginho is not going to be overloaded. Because you see here, five City players versus Arsenal six, where Rice is a bit yeah. deeper. So yeah. I think we might do that um, in the case of I, I agree. I agree. I, th I think, yeah, and I think Jorginho will play. It also gives you the advantage, as you, as you sort of mentioned, of Haaland with Silly and Gabriel. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Also, ready? Alex, really quickly. Um, oh, God, what now? <laughs> the John, Stone, John Stones being absent actually makes it much better for us in terms of Havertz not jumping too early because Stones is a massive part of their build-up. And without him, I think City will go a lot longer. And in that scenario, I don't want Jorginho being in the middle of the park 1v1 where he's got runners off him in De Bruyne. Yep. That's a real big issue. So I think you have to generate that numerical overload at the back to ensure that he is not overwhelmed there whereas if we had a thomas party we could happily do that if thomas party was fit and available that's so much better i feel like such a loser now such a loser <laughs> such a loser yeah i just yeah I, I i hear you on that i just want to run through a couple of scenarios i mean maybe let's we could sort of do our predicted lineups now i guess maybe that would be best to me to talk some tactics before we move on to something else i think raya uh let's let's move it. Well, let's move it out to a nice little nice little formation like this i think Oh, I have a feeling Kivio will start. Yeah, I think so as well. I just think, Mikhe like we, we're in such good form. And I know the name doesn't inspire much in terms of sort of, what's the word? Um, 
excitement, let's say. But I do think there is value in keeping things as they are. I like Kivio in terms of the physicality he brings. We've got to remember City are a big team, especially if they if they play um, with Stones. And I think De Bruyne is over six foot. Rodri's over six foot. Haaland's over yeah, six foot. Like like Walker's six foot. Diaz six foot. Ake six foot. You know, even the goalkeeper, six foot tall. So there's like, you know, there's some big players there. And I and from set pieces and stuff, I, I you know, they they are, a, as we saw against Liverpool, they are a risk. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I, ha I have a feeling that Kivio will start. I don't know. Um, would you agree with that starting 11? That is what I would pick. Let us know in the uh, comments what you think. Oh, well, it's Jorginho. Um, you think you need to stop Jorginho? He's not no, playing no, the right eight, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, right, so so there's there's been this narrative where, you know, you, you can't change a winning team, and I get that, but I also think the game is moving more towards something where you're looking at specialists to come in certain games to give you those fine margins. So the two choices that I mentioned, um, the two the two spots that are up for grabs. Um, Partey, in and Kibio? Partey and Kibio? Partey yeah. uh, and Kibio. Jorginho or Partey or Kibio and Tomiyasu. <laughs> <Yeah>. you... <laughs> Thomas, <laughs> you just said Tomiyasu. Oh, well. <laughs> we both just had a man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. But... <laughs> this guy and this man. This guy and this man. So this is the question that you have to ask yourself. Do you go with the informed player, maintain momentum that has been brought from his inclusion? He's had a massive part into it in terms of Kivior, what he's offered in his role. Or do you go with the guy who gives you a significant sample size of locking down wingers 1v1 and he gives you that greater reliability in that fashion? And but, 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 but the thing is, the fitness point is the argument. But let's assume, let's assume, right? Because we don't know. We don't know what happens in training. Let's assume that Tommy Asu is ready to go. He's ready to go. And you've got Kivior who's ready to go. There is a serious debate there. There's a yeah. serious debate. And I, if, if, if both are ready, if Tommy Asu is ready, I'd 100% go for Tommy Asu. 100%. But on the flip side, a Kivior who has, like he alluded to, I remember he, he did an interview and he said that, Give me time, give me a run of games, and you'll see what I'm about. And we are seeing it. We are seeing that. And the informed player, he's got momentum. There's a really good shout there. And then the Jorginho party one, it's a very similar scenario. You know, Thomas Party will allow you to combat more things than a Jorginho in this type of game. But Jorginho is informed. And Thomas Party, when he is a little bit rusty, my God, he is. God, yeah. Because I think his game relies on, his game is so reliant on that leaving things to the last moment to get past the player or yes. to receive a ball and create a little a little gap a little one two like it, it's so reliant on him being sharp which is kind of you know like he's not a a Ben White who I think you can slow you know he's less effective but he can grow into um sort of you know which is maybe why he's been able to play without yeah. without he's and not, also you know, he's, not explos he's not explosive in the same way yeah and also bear in mind Arteta did he dropped Ben White for the Man City game at the Emirates last mm. season. It was in form. It was in form. And he brought Tommy mm. Asser in. And obviously, he made a horrific um, error in the build-up to De Bruyne's goal. But yeah. he has done this before. And I wouldn't be surprised if he did do it. This is a good point. It's curtains for Zinni, unfortunately. Even for games like this, he's not a starter. Yeah, we're not even talking about Zinchenko. Yeah, not, not in this type of game, for sure. No. Yeah, interesting. Um, for City... Uh... We don't know on Walker and Stones. Let's assume yeah, okay. they are fit because I just have a feeling that they're going to be fit. Otherwise, are we happy with that? Oh, yeah, you got Doku as well. Why yeah, do I, I always that's... put Phil Foden 41? He's 47. I'm an idiot. Oh, I'm so bad with the numbers, you know. I can't even remember. But, yeah. Let's, um, let's put City in a scenario because, like, I think we could see like, there's so many different ways they can set up this is the this is my whole point they can they are equally as comfortable in terms of build up if you just ignore ignore the Arsenal players for now they're equally as comfortable in a build up with Walker and Ake really deep so really wide and almost the keeper becomes that third yeah. Rodri's in here and De Bruyne can drop in or Bernardo sometimes drops in and, and De Bruyne comes out wide and Rodri's on the left they create that box in there they can do, they can go into it and, you know, De Bruyne's maybe the free man or whatever. They can go into a three. They're sim similar to us in the sense, you know, we are we are uh, adaptable in all, sort of a number of different areas. More of a three, two with Walker a little bit higher, De Bruyne on the half space, Harlan. How do you anticipate, it's more of a, maybe Arsenal last season, that's sort of three, two, five. How, how do you anticipate 
City building up, do you think it will be as adaptable as I think it's going to be? I think it'll be a case of, right, it may well be. Let's let's just do like an example scenario. I think it might be something like this. So say City are in possession. Uh, just forgive me while I'm That's all right, moving yeah. all our players around. <laughs> Let me just move our players around. Sorry, sorry, guys. Give me one second. <laughs> A scenario like this. So what's let's say the best way, let's go back to the previous one. What do you think is the best way to counter something like this? Where yeah, they're I... stretching the pitch like that. De Bruyne is maybe free and Haaland's sort of joined that box. And they've got Doku out here. Uh what do you think the best way to counter that? I think again to leave it okay. leave us short in the um in the what's the word? In um the, the sort of the first phase. I think Erdogan and Habert's maybe in that two. Yeah. With that sort of four four two mid block, keeping it central in there. I... Are you thinking? Are you thinking Rodri's going to be on the left side? I'd swap probably Bernardo and Rodri. Do you think possible? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Bernardo yeah. might not play. This is just an example. I um, think what actually that's a good point. What what City could do is they could flip Rodri to get him away from Declan Rice. Um, if, yeah. if 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 Rice isn't marking his only, if Rice is marking man to man when he's in the midfield line, then I think I think that should be the principle. You know, when Rodri is in the middle of the park. We yep. cannot allow him to fit, to receive and turn. Like I said, you can allow yep. him to play the wall pass because, great, they've got control in the first phase, but they're not escaped. They've not yep. escaped past, and that's the key. But again, I think he's very similar there where Havertz, again, you're looking at who your weak, who the weaknesses are in build-up for City, and John Stones is significantly a better ball player than Ruben Diaz. So mm. you're trying to curve your run to force Diaz to get onto the ball, and then a cat Ake out wide, it's also a pressing trigger, very similar to Akanji, where if you press Ake really aggressively, which Wasaka will do, and, yep. and as we alluded to before, when, when you force teams out wide, that's when Arsenal form this cage and they suffocate yep. you and it's man-to-man -man and then they, 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 will, they, will, they, will, they will be relentless until they get the ball back or they force a throw in, etc. So yep. the idea will be, like I alluded to, when Rodri is in the middle of the park, Arsenal will still go for that same type of press that I, that I mentioned in the Community Shield. Havertz will curve his run. Rodri might receive the ball. He might play a wall pass back to Stones, but Havertz will stop Stones from progressing. That's why Havertz is such a... I think he's very underrated in terms of the intensity that he plays at. It's just... Yep. It's not very... You, you don't notice it because of his language style, um, but but that but that's the sort of kind of scenario that I think you will see yep. Arsenal adopt if City operated in this fashion. But I do yep. think you're going to see a lot of single pivot Rodri with the two number eights in this game if Georgie yep. is starting. Like this on the last line, I think, and there, then you probably have Rice and Jorginho on the inside there. I think Saka and Martinelli again yes. protecting these pockets. It's protecting these yeah. passes inside, yeah, uh, which Before they were they doing. With Erdogan, and, yeah. Erdogan and Havertz a little bit deeper, but Martinelli and Saka a lot, a lot, and maybe Kivior and, and White a little bit wider just to stop that the the balls over the top. So I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, again, yeah, that's Rodri's a single pivot. You might then ask, I don't know, maybe Stone steps in and Walker takes a bit more responsibility. Do you, do you then ask Martinelli to be a bit more? To be yeah, a quick, bit quicker on Walker. It, it, there's so, there's so many possibilities. I think this is uh, after the game. Maybe it's better to do this after the game, um, just to go through sort of all the things. But this, you know, I think yeah, they could drop in Rodri as a pivot. They could have Bernardo as the as a drop. This is the the brilliance of City is that all of these players, basically all of these guys, <laughs> pretty much, I'd say Walker's a little bit adaptable. But that sort of group there of Rodri, Bernardo, De Bruyne, Foden, and Stones, Stones can operate in basically all of these areas pretty comfortable even stepping forward Foden we know they can basically receive it anywhere and here Bernardo you know all these guys they can do anything this is this yeah, is the this is, this is the thing with it is is they could yeah. do anything and then it's about how we adapt and how we you know what the triggers are whether it's you know Rice stepping up or dropping deep whether it's Jorginho I don't know it's it's just going to be fascinating yeah, and I, I just think it's going to be so close and it's going to be decided by fine margins. You know, you go back to the Emirates game. We, we mentioned it last in the last um, podcast where it was a fortuitous, it was a really well, it was a, it was a well, it's a, it's, it was like a, a, a training ground goal that we mm. scored, but there was an element of luck to it as well. Yeah. And that's the fine margins swing in our favour, mm -hmm. just like it did for City back in 21-22 when Rodri scored the winner. Um, and I think it could be a game like that as well. And to be honest, you'll be frustrated. If Arsenal lost a game like that, you'd be so frustrated and gutted, but then you'd look back at it and you'd think, well, we competed against City again at the mm. Etienne and it was decided by far margin. And actually, going back to that Gary Neville and Jamie Carragher point, Arsenal don't need to win this game. How many times has a team won the league where they've beaten their rivals in both games? It doesn't happen. We've already beaten City at the Emirates this season. 
the key, yeah. the key that's, going that, into, that could be enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the key going into this season was to ensure that City don't take six points off us. We've already done that. We've done that. We've ensured that you know we won at the Emirates, and that was massive. Yeah. The games that will cost Arsenal will be the two Fulham games. Mm. That's where you look back on. You don't look back at this Etihad game. That I, I don't think that's fair. A fair reflection. We've already beaten City once this season. Now it's still very important for us, mm. but it's just as important for City. City cannot let Arsenal take six points off them. Yeah, yeah. And sort of jumping back off that, what do you think the implications are for the title race? Because I, you know, I, I remember. I can't remember if I was talking to you, but I remember before the Community Shield game. That I remember being like, I don't like saying games are must wins, but that Community Shield game is a must win. Yeah. But to, to prove that we can beat City to ourselves. I remember the Emirates, I was like, I don't like saying games are must-wins, but again, this is a must-win. Absolutely. I'm now on this this game. I'd be fine if we drew. I really would. I would my be mentality I, think that's is, decent, I think that's a decent yeah. result. I'd be fine. My, my mentality is get in there and get out with something. That's it. Yeah. Just, because just, I, I yeah. think the whole like, oh, if Arsenal if Arsenal beat City, then they, they have the psychological momentum. Maybe, maybe, but it's like... a long way to go. There's, so, there's such a long way to go. I just think... I think, yeah, may, maybe it's about avoiding loss and avoiding a painful loss might be... I think a painful loss would probably be the only thing psychologically that I think might have any kind of impact. Any other result, I think, is fine. Obviously, yeah, a win would be great, but, it, it, you know... A, a, a one nil loss, I don't think beats us. I, 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 a a one one draw, two two draw, you know, whatever, whatever happens, I'm not sure it has that much of an impact. If we go there and lose four nil, I think that could have an impact on the title race. But I, I just can't see that happening. So I am nervous for the game, but I'm also like fairly relaxed. I'm also, I'm like, I, I'm there's, fairly there's, relaxed. There's yeah. not many scenarios that I look at and go, well, there's one, <laughs> there's one yeah. scenario that I, that I can't see happening of us capitulating. And that having a long-term impact on the remaining eight games. Is it eight games? Nine games? Ten games. Well, nine That's games after mean. this. Nine games after this one. Yeah. 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 I think last season, if if we did anything other than win, that was a that was that was gonna have a, a psychological effect. This season I don't see that. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'm I'm fairly relaxed. I think and I think the pressure is on City, which is why I go back to um the annoyance. The pressure is on City to they have to win. They if they they have to win. If they if they lose because they they've got to play Aston Villa midweek and then I think they play Spurs on the weekend as well I think I'm pretty sure it's Arsenal Villa and Spurs for them whereas it's yeah. it's Man City Luton and then um, Brighton for us so yeah. it's just as important for City it's just yeah. as important. I think it's more important I think it's more important yeah. we, we, we're top of the league like yeah, yeah. I think our tester should be going in there going look guys guys we beat them twice this season all those things look at you know look at all the numbers we we know we are as good as these guys. If we come out of here, to, and not, he shouldn't say this, but the, the idea behind it, if we come out of here today with a draw, who's happier? It's us. It's definitely us. It's definitely us. <laughs> you so, give me a draw now, I'm taking it. I'm the broken. pressure's on City. So if yeah. you're saying a draw would favour Arsenal, the pressure yeah. then is on City, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I, 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 think, I think what people are probably looking at is the running that we have and the fixture congestion. That is where you, you, you look at it and think it is quite daunting. And that's when Mikel Arteta needs to utilise his squad. And I, I said it um, previously where I've got no doubt Arteta, on Sunday, he'll set the team up accordingly. We'll be able to adapt to what City do, providing that we have everyone available and ready in that lineup that you had. We'll be ready for it. The key is how we manage how we manage this season now, you know, and and that's something where there's fair criticism on him. Granted, those um, in previous seasons, the squad wasn't shaped to one that fits his mold, but still mm. now you look at it, the squad is very close to what he envisages, and um, it, it's it, that's 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 the key for us. But I think for Sunday, for me, if Arsenal lose, right, and it's a it's, there's a there's a really good chance of that happening. The key is to not allow it to dampen morale. You've got to go again. We have a game on Wednesday. And, and, and then you'll wait a game on Saturday. There's yeah. no time to feel sorry for ourselves. You just have to keep, you have to make sure that that motivation and that that mindset of not feeling down after adversity strikes, you can react to it. And um, and this is why I think Declan Rice is so key. Because Declan mm -hmm. Rice, I don't know if you saw the interview um, that he gave, he said these sorts of games. He's, he's a bit cringe. <laughs> he's a bit cringe. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the stuff you see, he's a bit cringe. But he, he mentioned how, you know, at the end of the day, Arsenal, we've not been in this position and we've not got over the line against these big teams in crunch time. So we have to put that to bed. And you, the mm. only way you do that is by winning. 
and and he he's relishing it. And you look at his performances in the high octane games for England against Italy in the Euro final. He was fantastic against France. He was the best midfielder on the pitch. Um, and in this season, we played City twice already. We played Liverpool twice. There is an argument that Declan Rice was man of the match in all of those games. You know, yeah, it's one hundred percent definite argument. Yeah, I just you know to maybe round this bit off. I just I can't see this whole thing of Arsenal must win to to ensure that we are top of the league. We, Arsenal, are top of the league. The pressure, if we drew, we would still be above City. So the pressure is on City. So we shouldn't go in there. And, you know, there's always pressure, but we shouldn't go in there with any kind of inferiority complex and just roll over. Yeah. We, we we have nothing to prove. We, yeah. There's nothing to... We have shown we can beat them. We've shown we're at the level and better. So we're not going there going, can we show we're good at football? We've shown we're good at football. Yeah. All we need to do is go in there and go, let's just play our way, control the moments when they come, not get too down, not get too up if we win, and move on, as you should in every title-winning team. Yeah. No get... You know, this is the thing is... If when you're in these positions as a, a as a team that we want to be, you know, that feeling of the last sort of five five years, sort of two years maybe for Arsenal, where there's like there's like this is a game to prove ourselves. This is a game where we I'm like, look, we need to get over the line, but to yeah. prove we're a good team, no. We've done that now. We've already done that this season. We've <laughs> we've we've done that. We've yeah. proved we're a good team. Yeah. We don't need this result to go in our favor to prove we're a good team. We might need this going in our favour to win the title. Let's yeah. see. The pressure's more on City in that sense, by the way, as we've as we've gone through. But to prove we're a good team? No. We, we've and, that's that. why, and that's why what you mentioned is spot on, where you know the Community Shield win was massive in terms of showing that, you know, we talk about it all the time where Arteta's tactically astute, et cetera, et cetera. But if you don't get over the line in any of those games against them, nobody cares. Nobody cares. And yeah. that's fair. But we did that in the Community Shield. We did that at the Emirates early in the season. So, there's your sample size of Arsenal being able to go head to head against Pep Guardiola and winning. We've done it against Jurgen Klopp many times now. You know, it, it's we are a good team, as you allude to. The key, well, the, the 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 question marks is: Can this Arsenal team deal with external factors when crunch time comes in, when games come thick and fast? You've got two elite managers on your neck. Can you keep going and going and going and get over the line? That's the question. And I'll tell you what, if we do it, there's some uncomfortable conversations. Mate, if we and do we it. we will be huge. there. Bookmarks, everything. I want to see every Arsenal fan become the most unbearable. Own any more Premier League titles than Gerard? <laughs> that would be unreal. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think we need to prove we can go to these grounds and win? What we need to prove is we can go to, yeah, go to the Etihad and win. But we've proved we can go. Well, my point is this. We are a good team. We're a good team. I think there's there's this sense from the media that I get that oh Arsenal needs to prove they've got title credentials. No, we don't. No. We are top of the league in the Pep and Klopp era, putting up better numbers than both of them consistently over a year sample. Now, what more we have shown we're at the level. So what we need to prove is okay, go to these grounds and win. We've we we've gone to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and won. We've gone to Anfield and drew. I appreciate that. We went to we beat City obviously uh, at the Emirates. We beat them at Wembley. We where else have we gone and won? Uh, we own Chelsea. I mean, if you're looking at the traditional big six, we've beat, beat Chelsea a few we've seasons Chelsea many times. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So of course we need to go to Anfield and 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 uh, what's it called? The yes, yeah. <laughs> Yes. But, but Alex, there's a really that, good point. I'd, I'd, yeah. I'd love to. I'd love to yeah. to go there and win. But my point is, we what are we trying to do? Proving this this comment is essentially saying, don't we need to prove we can go to these grounds and win? To prove what? Yeah. To prove what? That we're a good team? We've done that. To prove that we can win a, a, a ground? I'm not interested. I want to get over the, I want to win a title. I want to get yeah. over the line. Going to the ground and winning at the Etihad doesn't mean we win a title. We've got eight games left. It, it, and and it, also, it, it's what are we trying to prove? Yeah. And also, there's a really good comment. You know, City, the only time they've beaten Liverpool at Anfield was when there were no fans there. And City have won how many league mm. titles? They've not proved it at Anfield yeah, exactly. in front of a crowd. Yeah. This They've is my point. You don't this need to win. It's... You don't need to. Exactly, exactly. And we we have this thing of you know we want to go there and prove that we can we can beat them. I'm not say I, I would be no one would be happier than me if we do it. But again, as we say, what we're we trying to prove, we're trying to prove we can win a title, and we don't need to go and win there to do that. Simple as. Um, 
guys, you're missing the ultimate banter opportunity with Cedric having a title win. Yeah. Cedric Suarez would have more titles than than Steven uh, Gerrard. Than Steven Gerrard. That is mad. <laughs> that is mad. Um, we're going to do a question quickly that I pose to you and do it on uh, on the stream. And then we'll come to your question. So please get your questions in in the comments and uh, we will come to them as and when after this. But I asked you yesterday, Rohan, you said it was a good question and I felt a warm glow in my heart as you said that. So I will ask you. You posted on X and it brought a good discussion. You know, you know. Um, Here's the question. And I would love you to answer this in the comments. If Arteta had the choice of signing Rodri from Atletico Madrid this summer, or as he was then when he went over City signed him when he was 23 or whatever it was, uh, or Declan Rice, as when we signed him last summer, but this summer from West Ham, for the same price. So essentially what I'm asking you is, which profile would Mikel prefer? Who would he pick? Yeah, this one. That's why I said it was a good question, because I think, it, on, on when I saw some of the comments, it felt like people were so sure on one side and others were so, so sure on the other side. I think it's very close, because if you're looking at Mikel Arteta and what he sees the Premier League as it is, and those quotes in terms of you need that athletic aggression, otherwise you're going to get rolled off the park against the big teams. You know, that 1v1 dual winning capacity. Declan Rice fits that mould. And I would say stylistically, Declan Rice is the type of midfielder Mikel Arteta would love. But then on the flip side, Mikel Arteta actually advocated for Rodri um, when he was there at City. So I would say Rice is more suited to the profile Arteta likes. But on the flip side, someone could argue and say, well, Mikel Arteta is the one who wanted Rodri. He, he advocated for Rodri a lot when he was at Manchester City. He also coached him a lot in terms of when to receive, where, what positions to occupy, depending on, on ball side, etc. So... It's close, but I think I would edge it to Declan Rice because of how I'd say he's he's a lot more complete. And obviously, Declan Rice will have to prove it over the next few years and Arsenal have to win league titles and Champions Leagues, etc. for him to topple Rodri's achievements. But as a profile, Rodri can never reach the levels Declan Rice has off the ball. Declan Rice's capacity off the ball is insane. Whereas Rice can reach the levels of Rodri on the ball. And that's why I'd say he would just edge, Rod, um, edge Rice. But it's close. That's a that's a good way of putting it. Yeah, I I think it's essentially as you said earlier, it's the best in possession midfielder. Let's let's call it deep midfielder in the world because I think it's, you know there's there's different things you could say. Well, De Bruyne is you know probably better on the ball in the final third, whatever. Deep midfielder on in on the ball in the world against the best midfielder out of possession. Again, maybe you know deep midfielder, where, where, yeah. Holding midfielders, midfielder. yeah, yeah, holding midfielders, yeah, holding in the world. And as you say, do I believe that? Rodri has, I, I think, you know, this is random. Players like Morgan Gibbs White, not just from the the um, the moment where he sort of grabbed him, but I actually think there's a there's something there. Why did Morgan Gibbs White get Rodri so rolled up? I think it's because he knows that sharpness. I've seen Rodri. He's he's so people forget how big Rodri is. He's a massive guy, yeah, he's a and he's got. He's big torso, big legs. He's a big boy. And I think, I'm not saying he doesn't turn like milk and I'm not slagging him off. I'm not saying all those things. But what I am saying is there's a springiness in Rice's quality, in his off-ball off um, quality that Rodri doesn't quite have. It's, yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's nearly there. I'm not saying, again, when you say, oh, he doesn't have the springiness, the right, we go, oh, so you're saying he's a bum. No, I'm not. I'm saying he's a, a brilliant athlete. But what separates them off the ball is that spring that Rice has. You can you can see when Rice steps forward, ironically, on Rodri and the community shows we were talking about, he he's re- there's a there's a moment where you see the acceleration. I've never seen Rodri do that off the ball. He can be in the right position, he can tackle well, he can, but there's not that X factor off the ball. Rice, I think I can see that development of the maybe slightly more metronomic aspects that Rodri has coming i don't see you know i don't see either uh, any problem in that developing in rice's game and i think it is developing in his game i actually sometimes prefer well i pr- definitely prefer rice uh, rodri's pass selection i think that's something for, for rice to develop but with rodri i don't think there's anything separating them in terms of their their passing range i, th- I think in terms of you know can, can can rice play the same types of balls okay maybe different quality you know does he select them as often maybe not 
but does does Rice have the same ability, long range, short range, medium range, range as Rodri to play those balls? I think he does. I just think Rice is less confident to do that. That's yeah. what I think. Yeah. So do I, I basically what I'm trying to say is, yeah, you've got the two out of possession and in possession. And I think it's exactly what you said. I think I can see Rice developing through there. You can't add spring to your game at 20. No, exactly. Yeah. You can't, you can't do that. Yeah. He, and, and, and also, yeah, that, that's, it's very simple where you look at it and think Declan Rice is fantastic on the ball, but Rodri is elite, right? Rice can get there, yeah. but Rodri can't get to where Rice is off the ball. And yeah. this brings another question, right? And I saw it on one of the quotes. Rodri, Rice, or Thomas Partey when he was at that yeah. team Madrid? Yeah. I think there's also, I still think it would be Rice, but I think Partey could edge Rodri potentially. Do you? Um, I, I, <laughs> I think that would depend on the team. Yeah. That would depend because, like for example, a midfielder like Xhaka, who is a lot more, uh, f- no, uh, uh, let's not use Xhaka. A midf- it, dep- it would depend on the balance of the midfield. I think. I think yeah. if you're starting a new midfield and you're you know rebuilding, I, I I think he'd stick with Rice. But I think if he already had quite combative. Um, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, midfielders who are and maybe a, a particularly diminutive, maybe had like a sort of let's let's build a midfield, right? Let's say he had like a like a Am- Amadou Anana and a uh, a David Silva. I think he'd pick a Thomas Partey because I think you've got the combativeness there. It's it's all about balance, isn't it? You've got the combativeness there, there and the, sh- the shuttling and the running there. You've got David Silva, who's so brilliant in the pockets, can receive anywhere, and then you've got someone who is progressive and can and can do that 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 passing and be that sort of hub. Again, if you've got Jorginho, okay, that's more of a metronome. You're missing a little bit of physical quality. Maybe you need instead of a completely creative midfielder, maybe you ask for an Odegaard in in, in that role because he, yes, he's a creative midfielder, but he's also got the legs to get up and down and help Jorginho. Yeah. So it's it's all about balance. I think if he was starting a midfield, I think he'd pick Rice. But I think if he had, as I say, a combative midfielder and a really technical, techie, diminutive Santi Gazzola type midfielder, I think he'd pick Partey to get that ball to him. That's what I do. Spitting ball knowledge. It's all in there, mate. It's all in there. All in. Uh, let's do some questions. Let's do some questions to finish off the show. First question: How do you do your hair? How do I do my hair? <laughs> Let's do some questions, folks. Uh, get your questions in and we will finish them off. Um, we haven't done a prediction yet, have we? I've got this vision. 1-1. One, one. It's my prediction. 1-1. One, one. So you know, oh, if you know me, I'm a believer. I think we'll score first. I'm... And I think see, we'll get back. Do you remember, um, oh, I don't know if you can remember it, when we went to the Etihad and Jolien Lescott scored uh, from a set piece, right? And I think it was like the 20, 20th minute or something. Vaguely, I don't remember the goal, but and then in the eighty third minute, Koscielny scored such a oh. good goal from us. Do you remember where he, where he, where he chests it and then he just he rifles it in the top corner? I've got a feeling we're gonna hit, it. we're gonna nick it, nick this a set piece goal on Gabriel Powerhouse header. Honestly, the limbs, so oh, I would yes, love to be the limbs there at the, at the at the Arsenal end as well, where where you know when Adebayo did that that celebration, the limbs. Oh my god! Oh my yeah. god! I can see it. I can see that. It's going to be unbelievable. The scenes, it will be Havertz who nods it home, says King Carl Alex. Yeah. Uh, HFN says, thoughts on the Gibbs White links as a replacement for you. So I haven't seen the Gibbs White links. Um, I really like Gibbs White. I love these kind of low socked, techie ball carriers. But I think what separates, I think Gibbs White is a little bit more individual and Smith is a little bit more. So I'm just trying to imagine them playing in my head. I think Gibbs White is a bit more individual and Smith is a bit more associative. What yes. I love about Gibbs White is he does have that kind of that he does have that or he's got that dog. The he thing is, I, I think and I think Smith Rose lost some confidence, and that's why I think Smith I think they're similarish players, to be honest. But I think Gibbs White just has that little, you know, as we were talking about Rice earlier, that X factor in possession where he will try stuff. I think at the moment Smith Rose is so worried about keeping his place that he just very is very I think they're, they're very similar in terms of how they like to receive in the hard term and drive and commit players. But I think, yeah, yeah. as you allude to, Gibbs White is a lot more individualistic where I think there's Bruno Fernandes comparisons in terms of he'll try and pull the trigger in situations that will frustrate you. Whereas Smith Rowe, 
he is more of a combination player where he likes, likes to play quick give and goes, third man runs. Whereas Gibbs White, Gibbs White, I think he is someone who likes to play more on the edge of the box yeah. and will look to try and pull the trigger. Whereas Smith Rowe, he's a little bit different. Yeah. And also on the edge of the game as well. He's a little bit, he picks up yellows, pick, you know, he's a bit more combative with the refs and stuff like that. They're both te- technically gifted sort of you know almost six footy type you know stocky players who who can drive with the ball who can drift that wide that sort of stuff i just think there is a bit of an x factor to gibbs white it's it's like if smith rowe's career had gone slightly differently and he was slightly more arrogant i think in, in a football sense i don't know yeah. as person but yeah, I, in, in a football it's, sense it's one of those ones though it's, it's not what we need though and, and and that's what yeah uh let's do biz budget says who is the ideal backup for Saka? who can the club potentially sign i are you disrespecting our no your it's a hard business? question that's what i say i'm going i thought you did an eye roll i thought you did an eye roll there no, no. <laughs> i think i think i saw an eye roll there right <laughs> wow okay someone's got too big for his boots wow gets his own podcast that's eye rolling at the listeners wow <laughs> Wow. <laughs> um, I think um yeah, you're being so disrespectful. I think this is a stupid question. <laughs> I think this is I think I think the the framing of the question is the idea that that we will have someone who comes into the squad who does a similar job to Saka in the same way and sits on the bench and basically waits for him to be injured. I don't think that's gonna happen. What I feel is gonna happen is we sign a different type of winger on that side who maybe is also a more of a 10 as well. You know, like I think we'll do something like, I, I think like the Nico Williams shouts I get because he's a similar player. I don't think we'll do that. Yeah, It could be Jesus as well. It could be, we see Jesus out more out there wide as a, as a more of an overlappy winger who takes his man. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I just don't think we'll see. Um, I don't think we'll see Saka tried to be uh, copied. I don't, I yeah, I don't, I don't think there's the, the market opportunity to do that anyway, <laughs> to get yeah, a stylistically yeah. similar sort of player to Saka. Yeah. But you, and, you and, and, and I'm going to cut you off. And in terms of squad management as well, <laughs> it's actually not good squad management because you then just have an asset that isn't as good as Saka sat on the bench depreciating. You need someone who yeah. can bring something else and, and you change the game around it. Tell you what, though, there is another right winger up and coming who looks certified elite soon. It's the Barcelona Go on. one. Le, Le oh, Le Yamal. Le oh, my oh, my God. Oh my, I, w- I was watching that game. The mate. burst, the pace when he's running with the ball, and it's the like manipulation at speed, mate. It's mad. It he's giving mad. me like he gives me like Rafinha vibes, but on steroids. <laughs> he makes such for a young yeah. player. He makes such yeah. early decisions. Yeah, you often see young players. What go watch U twenty ones? You'll watch it. Players will like do a bit of amazing bit of dribbling, and then you can almost watch them go. What do I do now? <laughs> and Yamal is like he just. He, it's almost like he. He's trying to get to the action. So he'll he's like, right, I'm going to dribble because I'm going to do that. It'll be like, this dribble is a facilitator to get that pass off rather yeah. than I'm just going to dribble because I'm good and then just see what happens. He's made he's so good. He, he's only 16 as well. And, and I, I think if you actually look at how he receives the ball and how he approaches 1v1s, it's very Rafinha-esque, but Rafinha yeah, is. is so frustrating in the final yeah. third. Whereas he yeah. already seems like he's got such a strong level of decision making and, yeah. and 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 that understanding and appreciation yeah. space is just mate, it's that, like, it, the mistake. biggest the biggest separator at that level because like yeah. you know maybe Yamal is a bad example but like the biggest separator of young players I think is their decision making that's why Saka is the, where he is yeah. when you when you have that decision making the final third and the way I describe it is is what I said with Yamal it's like. They've got the ball and they see the picture. They go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna crash the box here and get that pass off there. And then they need they get take about three actions before they get to that. But then they already they have that, they know the moment that they're yeah. trying to get to. As I say, a lot of young players, especially forwards, are brilliant technically, can dr- dr- glide past you, can r- wriggle out of areas, and then they get head up and it's deer in the headlights, rather than I'm dribbling through that space to play that pass over there. I think yeah. that's a that's uh yeah i think it's one that it's like what separates the good young players from the very best is that confidence and that arrogance and and yeah. like you say just the that efficiency the confidence you'll, you'll just be leaders see that's good that's mcguire McGuire. <laughs> <laughs> you do tim cahill one do do tim cahill i don't think i've got a tim cahill what is he is he um australia Aust- 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 yeah ah roy mate you're an absolute idiot yeah, it's not bad. It's not roy bad. come on mate Alex looks like a Lord Kitchener regen. Who's Lord Kitchener? 
Lord Kitchener. Do I, do I want to know this? Lord Kitchener. Is that some sort of Warhammer thing? Oh, uh, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you. Has he got it's curly this, hair? It's, it's this dude. Because I've got a bit of a moustache. I wouldn't use that um, specific comparison, though. What would you use? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You're very uh, unique. You you don't look like anyone. You are unique. <laughs> you are beautiful. And yes. Thanks, Rohan. It, <laughs> the the phrase "you don't look like anyone" is a it's it's it was one of those sort of like backhanded compliments, isn't it? No, nah, surely it'd be better to not look well, like. You, don't don't you just don't look like anyone. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't look like anyone. Just <laughs> blank. Just, just, just blank. Yeah, just nothing. The poor man's Harvey Elliott. I'll take that. I've had um, I've had a lot of um comments on SDS saying that I look like Diogo Jota, which to be fair in the video because my I hadn't done my hair that day, so it was really um like tight curls. So I just spell Diogo Jota. Jota has really big eyes, doesn't he? I, to be clear, I don't think I look like Diogo Jota. I'm not sure that's the... I don't yeah. agree with that comment. I don't agree with it. You're the field right. tilt guy. I am the field tilt guy. That is so funny. <laughs> if you missed this, guy. one of the comments on the SDS video is, it's the field tilt guy, which is all from... You, you might know this, you might not, but essentially, um, <laughs> our favourite friend, Mr. Gunner, um, was sent a clip of me on the Canon podcast, joking about field tilt. But to be fair to him, in the clip, you can't tell that I'm joking because I'm like trying to find something. So I'm like, we'll take it. We will absolutely take it. You can't quite tell that I'm. Was it I'm after joking. an L or was it like a? Draw? No, it was after a win. And he okay. so so basically everyone thinks. So then he put it on his channel, and everyone thinks that I'm the field tilt guy who said, "We'll take it. We'll absolutely take it." <laughs> because they don't know the joke. Me and Lee Gunner actually got along on Twitter. Back in the day. Oh, I love him. He just needs he just needs love. Everyone just needs love, oh, Rohan. No issues with League on that. <laughs> Everyone needs love. Um, uh, let's finish with one last question. One last question. And it will be from this. No James B. <laughs> <laughs> He's too good. He's just That's too a thumbs good. down. Oh, oh wait, can I do it as well? Oh, God's sake. I've been seeing this. Oh, what? Look at that! Wait. Oh, it's not working. For God's sake. Do it again. That but is amazing, isn't it? it? If you hold it, you hold it's it. Like I've just, it's like I've just discovered yeah. fire. <laughs> oh, forget it. Forget it. Hold it, a bit, hold it a little bit longer. Hold it a little okay. bit longer. Like that. Look, keep it still. Keep it still. Wait, it's not me... happening. It's not happening. Let me... I'll come out. <laughs> oh, it's useless. <laughs> it's useless. Well, why can't I do it? <laughs> I've done it on Instagram, before, no, on, on WhatsApp video. Let's finish with this. Would Ferdi Cadiolu Kad be a good profile for us on the season? Have you heard of him? Hey. Ready? Right. So, is this, this is what you do. This is what this is what people do. By the way, I I've got a story about this from professionals. I'll tell you after because I can't say it on stream. But there is a there's a and I know this for a fact now. Professionals do this because I thought they were. This is how to waffle about a player you've never heard of. Ready? Uh, ask me the question. What? Ask me the question here, and okay. I'll, would, I've never heard of him, 30, but I'll I'll waffle like I'll waffle like. Would Cadio like Glue be a good profile for Arsenal? Because I feel like I know what you're going to do. Ooh, um. Yeah, like the player. I like the player. I think from what I've seen of him, he's direct. Um, he's dynamic. Uh, he's technically <laughs> really, really solid. Obviously, good age profile. Um, turning radius. Turning radius is good. <laughs> Elite ball um, striking. <laughs> I think the ball striking of both feet is really nice. He can he receives it really nicely in the block. Um, yeah, it's a solid player. I, I do worry about the deal. I do worry about the deal. But um, you know, if Arteta wants him, you know, let's see. You have no idea what position he plays. You have no idea where he plays. You have no idea what qualities he has. No, 
I, I've noticed, yeah, I've noticed some people, right? They're copying some of the big accounts in terms of their terminology and what they use, and they'll tweet it out, and they'll get, like, so many likes, so many retweets, and, like, people will believe it's it. So it's so embarrassing. Expensive. Turning it's so... radius, also striking. Just say you don't know a player. Right, I'm a, f- not full-time, I'm part-time football creator, okay? I don't want... I don't watch every league in the world. Sue me. I'm not a scout. I oh, don't so know. Ben White, and it's like okay football. to say you don't know something. It really, on, again, on SDS, this guy, this guy made, I, I was picking Luis Suarez. Oh, we haven't done the combined 11. You got time? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. We'll do the combined 11 and then we'll finish with that. Um, uh, the, what was going to say? Yeah, yeah. The, they, uh, the guy made, I, I had Luis Suarez in my team, right? Mm-hmm. And Ab, so I really like Ab's Busquets, who's a really nice guy, made a really good point about Aguero, saying that basically using my logic of why I'd pick Walker over Trent, you have to pick Aguero over Suarez, and I'll explain that in a minute. And I went, yeah, yeah, that makes sense, actually. Yeah, yeah, I'll buy that. I'll, I'll have Aguero. And the comments are like, you wimp. You <laughs> wimp. Why are you budging? I was like, this, this, this guy's got no balls. I'm like... <laughs> Right, so you want me to hear a good argument. This is what this is what yeah. you want to happen. You want me to hear a good argument, l- listen to it, and then go, no. Yeah. No, no, no. To be, no, no. Yeah, just to hold your ground. For, just to hold if, my ground. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm a wimp. <laughs> yeah, you're a wimp. <laughs> He's embarrassing. Uh, let's finish with our combined 11, Rohan. Okay. Because we haven't actually done that. Um, so this is... And, Chaps and chapettes in the comments, we would love your input on this as well. So we're building our, and I know, I know combined 11s are rubbish anyway, but it's just funny, isn't it? Um, From a functionality point of view. Yeah, so we want this to be functional. Yeah. This is our all-time Premier League era 11 for the title chases. So Liverpool, City, and Arsenal. If any of you comment about a Man United player, I'm banning you from the chat. As you know, Rowan will ban you from his podcast. We aren't banning you from the chat. In goal, <laughs> it's Alisson. Yes, agree. That is not deb- debatable. If anyone disagrees, yeah, yeah. you are also banned in the chat. Uh, at right back. I would personally go for Walker. I would go for Walker as well. This is turning and I, into a very, I, I, very boring combined 11. <laughs> I, I would also counter that argument. No! No! <laughs> it's so no, I, would counter, <laughs> I, I would counter the argument that he made because he's looking at peak in terms of on the ball. Obviously, Trent with the number of six, etc. But Walker off the ball, off the ball matters as well. He also had insane peaks in terms of he's locking off the best wingers out there as well. That is just as important as what Trent offered on the ball. Now, it's, I, I think there is a really good debate there to be had with Trent in, but I would go for Walker. The consistency as well. Um, it's Rony. <laughs> <laughs> but it, 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 it's, it's, it's one of those ones where I, I wouldn't like say it's a poor decision to put Trent in. Put Wan Ronnie. Wan Ronnie. <laughs> put in Wan Ronnie in. Um, I I just think five Prems. Like Trent will be in there. He will be. And as he becomes a midfielder, like he's unbelievable. But five Premier Leagues. I also made the point on the podcast that if you are... It, <sighs> If the entire system is built around you, which it was for like three years, it was Trent and Robertson. That was that was how it works. Like, I'm not saying it devalues your achievements, but the entire it's like it's like someone saying that I don't know, who's another system that was built around I don't know Perlo. It's like it's like saying when Perlo was playing for um, that like that the the Italy national team. It's like Perlo looks unbelievable and therefore he's the best player. It's like that entire Italy national team was built around Andrea Perlo. And and, and I'm not taking away his qualities, but if you have to factor that in when you're rating the player, the entire team was built around it, which to to, to accentuate his qualities. And someone like likewise Robertson as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so you have to you have to have to say that. No, we we agree there. We agree. But I I, I hear the Trent argument there. I do hear it. Yeah. We're looking, I believe. For Virgil van Dijk's partner, are we not? Yes, and that I am. I am very sure of this. Locked out the amount of games that I watched of Arsenal's Invincible era and also other years, the full nineties. His partner is Sol Campbell. Hang on, I just realised we need to spell it like how you would. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> the, oh, jewel. the jewel. <laughs> the jewel. Um, I, uh, I like the Campbell shout. I'll be honest, I didn't watch enough of him. <laughs> Kimi? <laughs> um, I liked... Yeah. I, I like... I, Sol Campbell and Kolo Tori, I liken that very is stylistically quite similar to Sleeve and Gabriel. Although I think Gabriel's peak is much bigger than Kolo Torre's, but I think it's a really good stylistic comparison. Campbell was that Saliba kind of calm presence, but also that one v one specialist. For okay, but for for the sake of it becoming a being a functioning eleven, true. They both played left centre back, and also I would rather a big strong boy. But they were next both right footed. An aggressive, yeah. big, strong boy next to Virgil. Do you not think Campbell is though? I think he is. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Oh, God. <laughs> Get out of the stream now. <laughs> Left back Sashi Cole. We're not we're not debating that. It's Sashi Cole. Yeah, I can't take this seriously. We've got Rob Holding in the all time. No, we've got Rob Holding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, midfield three. This is interesting. I think Rodri KDB's in there. Not debatable. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think for a functioning eleven. Because this was the whole point on the podcast. People were saying Vieira. But I think putting Vieira there as opposed to there... You limit him. You limit him. 100%. And they were saying, well, then why don't you do... Let's say we have Gerard. Why don't you do this? Which, again, I think limits the players. Because I think De Bruyne is best in here. I think Gerard's best as a shuttler. And I'd rather have a sitter. So For what me, do you want to do? For me, the debate is you. I if you, I I want Patrick Vieira in because you know, I watched ridiculous amounts of Arsenal footage in lockdown and also like just many times clips. The debate is either Gerard or Vieira, and then you have a proper sitter there. That's that's what you. That's the debate. I I would I would go Gerard. I think he has the bigger Prem legacy. Okay, but I want I want a slash a dash there for Vieira, and then I want Rod. I'd put Rodri as your sitter. You doing? Oh, for God's sake, you're thinking about that one, <laughs> Gerard. <laughs> De Bruyne, <laughs> and then yeah, I think we're saying, I think I'm saying I want Rodri in there. So here's your choices, right? You've got the likes of um, Javier Mascherano, you've got uh, Rodri, Alonso, Michael G Arteta, Javier Alonso, Gilberto, Michael Arteta. Um, Francis I think Potter. I want Rodri in there. Yeah, and then I think look at that, to yeah. make that team work, yeah, just think of the balance. Think of think of him, think of him covering for Rob Holding. <laughs> can we chat? Can we fun. do Rodri? Chat? Can we do Rodri? What does the chat want? Let's see. Let's how see can, what. How can Gerard be in a PL title chasing team? When he's not got a Premier League, when El Nenny's going to have one. Such a Brexit well, opinion. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I'll be using it. I'll okay, people are it. saying no to Rodri. Who no. are we saying? They want, they want, they want. Oh, oh no, we've got Rodri. We've got a yes. We've yes. got a no. No. <laughs> yes. No. We get yes, yes Rodri. Oh, the chat is the chat is fully split. I'm going to do a poll for this. I've literally got to do other things this evening. <laughs> <laughs> Why have I ended up doing this? Wait, am I sharing? I'm sharing that screen. I shouldn't be doing that. You're, you're sharing me your YouTube screen yeah, right you, now. You guys can't see this. Otherwise, you'll see how much money I'm not making. Um, <laughs> I'm going to do a. Um, I'm going to do a poll in the chat. Start a poll. Uh, Rodri. Rodri's got or... three Premier Leagues. He's got a clutch goal against Aston Villa to keep them in it. Come on. And also... Rodri or Vieira? No. That's... No. What do you mean? No, it's, it's, you can't. You can't do that. 
What do you mean I can't? Oh, Vieira's got 73% of the vote, 75% of the vote. Yeah, come on, the chat. Vieira. It's, it's either Vieira or... I think Rodri has to be in the team. 22, 20, 29 votes. Uh, everyone's saying Vieira. All right, Vieira's going. Why don't we just play 12 players there? <laughs> We're playing Rob Holding. <laughs> We definitely need that. need that extra player then. <laughs> I need that. We need that. Okay, fine. Paddy. I don't think you're getting the most out of him. Just for, just for, um, what's the word? Just for everyone to know. No, I'm mm. saying, I'm saying I hear the Gerard argument over Vieira, but I don't think he should be Vieira over Rodri. That doesn't make sense to me. That's, that's, I hear the Gerard argument with Rodri there, but I also prefer Vieira, Rodri, and De Bruyne. Uh, on the left. Yeah, I was thinking about this one. And then I think the only way for me to get the team as I want it, it has to be him through the left, even though he's the greatest Premier League, Premier League player of all time. And we're shoehorning him in the left, which looks a bit weird. But that shows that also, like you made the point, how it shows his adaptability and what how good he is. And also, yeah. you made you another very good point. Yeah, and you also made a very good point where Henri mm. is devastating down that inside channel. Yeah. And with that... Ashley Cole there as well, you've got that in abundance. Yeah. Um, am I going to share this opinion? No, I'm not going to share that. I'll tell you that after. I've got is an opinion about Ashley Cole. Um, I need to tell you that story as well. So in between the centre-back and the full-back there, that, that was Henri's best channel in there. So I'm okay putting him out left because also you'd have Ashley Cole bombing on. He'd be, the, he'd be in there and Henri would be there. So I think that's working. I think, And then, then Vieira would be here and you get transitioned through and everyone would go, why didn't we have Rodri? And I'd go, yeah, exactly. Um <clears throat> Who is going on the right hand side? It's Mo, it's Mo Salah. It's Mo Salah. Mo Salah. Running down the wing. Salah. Um, can you read these? I think. Right. Oh, for God's sake. I think. I think we're going to do another. I think we're going to do another poll. For Suarez or Aguero, I think that is the debate essentially. Yeah, that, that that's a good debate, and it, I I would go Aguero personally. Um, Ooh. Yeah. So, you pitch. Pitch of where it's me. No, pitch actually, it's me. actually do you know what? No, no, no. Do you know what? Either way, I'll, make your mind up. Let me change. Let me change my mind. I think Suarez gives you greater facilitation, which will push Henri more in central forward positions as well. So actually, I'll change to Suarez. Suarez. Yeah. Aguero. Hang on. But Aguero, that, that short back lift and ball strength. And, oh, my God. I don't know, actually, in this one. Okay, for, just, the, for the for the greater good of Henri, I am going for. I'll just put it in the chat. I, I'm 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 facilitating the best Ooh. player of all time in the Premier League. Ooh, Suarez so is in the lead. Yeah, I'm going for Suarez because it will bring more out of Henri, even though he doesn't need anyone to help him. So my argument on on SDS was this: I think Aguero might have a bigger Premier League legacy, but if you're sat there saying peak Suarez versus peak Aguero. You've got uh, n n the 90 minutes to save your bacon. Who do you want at number nine? I'd have Luis Suarez. Suarez left before, which which then may be for a Premier League 11. Do you know the chat saying Suarez, mate? It's, it's, it's a case of, do you go for peak or do you go for longevity? But then Suarez wasn't able to showcase his longevity because he left. <laughs> so Yeah. So this is my whole thing with Pep. People are like, well, he hasn't won... He hasn't, he hasn't won 13 titles. Yeah, if he, if Pep was here for 26 years, he'd win 22 titles. This 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 Pep team would be <sighs> Fergus Fergie's um, treble winning team. Of course he would. Pep, greatest manager of all time. What's going on here? Um, You're having a bit too much fun. I think I'm having a bit too much fun. You're having a little bit... Chat too saying too Suarez. Fun. Chat saying Suarez. So he put Suarez in. What is happening with these spellings? And why are they not... That's how you spell them. That's well, how you spell them. <laughs> Fine. What, who should be the centre-back? No, it's Rob Holding. There you go. This is the TDK. I'm going to share this on social media so everyone can see it and we can get cooked for it because it's fun. Yeah, go on. Actually share it. I'm ready yeah. for it. But, uh, but I, am not, I am not part of this Rob Hold, whatever it is. Yeah. You are. You said we should have Vieira in. What does that have to do with Rob Holding? No, sorry. Not... <laughs> <laughs> I'm lost. I'm lost. Uh, Guna, 1123, thank you so much for your contribution, oh, mate. Really yeah. appreciate it. Um, everyone, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. We'll be back How many next Thursday. Are in the chat? 500. Mate, your podcast is blowing up. I'll tell you that. 
your podcast. It's your podcast. A your sixth podcast. of the channel. No, a seventh of the channel are here watching live. That is crazy. That's crazy, guys. That's, that's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. Big Soul is in there. As can, the, I, as can, the, I hear your, um, can I hear your best pep impression? No. <laughs> I can't do Says it. Says R. Thank you so much for this. Any creators chat club culture and political history? Oh, if, if he's, he's talking about content creators who, who, who are looking, who give you that. Oh, sort of that's an interesting one because not that's many. A good do. question. I think fun content. There's so much out there these days, but there's not. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, in the end, let me just interrupt you. Um, in the in the, <laughs> in the <laughs> that was such a bad one. Sorry, I completely cut you off. <laughs> carry on, carry no, on. No, actually, hold on. really quickly, yeah. You know, all jokes are <laughs> quick. Come back. <laughs> I actually do think <laughs> I actually do think you spotted a niche um, when you started with a different lock um, in user videos. But I think right now everyone's quite people are, are, are quite similar to each other. There's a lot of like same samey. If that, that's not a word, but um, think... there are things that you can explore. And I think something like that there def is definitely also yeah. women's football. Women's football is the yeah, yeah, yeah. gap in the market there as well. I keep thinking I want to start a women's football podcast. I think there's an, I think there's two niches. One big and one small, one in Arsenal. Uh, of a kind of, because Arsenal Vision kind of do it, of like essentially, do you want to watch the women's team but don't really know where to start? What listen to this podcast, I think would be a really good idea. Because like so much of my Arsenal understanding comes from listening to podcasts when I was like, when I was a bit younger. There's That's a really good, into. there's a really good chance for someone out there if they really, really love the women's game. I'm so like they've been watching it for years mm. and years and years, they could be the first ones to make it. Yeah, in yeah, that yeah. in that manner yeah. and then it's everyone possible. will look to them first yeah big time i mean obviously so, it's tim stoneman at the minute but he obviously covers the men's game as well but if you covered just the um yeah if you covered just the women's game i think there's a big niche and also massive. i think there's a massive niche if you could do because video, video essays this is my whole thing about different knock there was there's no one else there wasn't anyone at the time i think there's people people now doing video essays about arsenal as in like 10 minute scripted things there was live streams or well, not that i knew anyway anyway there was live streams. There was like fan cat cams. There was tactics stuff, but there wasn't any like just video essays. If you could get a different knock for United video essays and do them well, mate, that would blow up. I think there are some for United, but they're not in this not in that style of like it's like one idea expanded in a ten minute it's, video it's essay. Not, it's not the money, the money ten minutes. <laughs> it's not. It's not <laughs> but as in, if you could get one <laughs> like one idea yeah. expanded into a ten minute video, like you know, answering one question about the club or something, like really yeah. deep dive, mate, you'd be. There's 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 a gap there, and actually the women's game is mental. You know, like the the, the Chelsea Arsenal game. Um, I think it was a couple of weeks ago. Now we got absolutely smashed, but sold out again. They're selling out these these grounds. Yeah. You know, it's these amazing. Games. It's so, honestly so. so good. Maybe we should start one. Yeah. No. Uh, Rohan, have you been mewing? You're looking sharp, brother. I think this is my sign to leave. <laughs> I don't know what that means. What's mewing? I don't know, thank you, but... I don't, I don't know what mewing means. Mewing? don't know what mewing means. I'm going to be checking um, that and adding it on my vocabulary. Pleasure, as always. Thank you so much, guys, for being here. Really appreciate you. I genuinely... TDK Live might be my favourite thing I do in the week. I'm not even joking. It's might. so fun. Might. I said might. That's what I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, it's, enjoy it. I do enjoy it. It's just so much fun and you guys make it so much fun and yeah, join in on the banter and stuff and it is just good vibes. So thank you it's all so much. For, uh, a, bit, a, bit, a bit of roasting here and there. A bit of roasting. A bit of fun. A couple of impressions. Bob's your uncle. Bob's your uncle. <laughs> and Fanny's your aunt. Yeah. Thanks, <laughs> as always, for listening to the Rohan Jeevan podcast. Uh, see you next time on Joe Rohan. Uh, I'll see you soon. Any any last thoughts, Rohan? No. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>